I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. Submarines in wartime are relentless destroyers. The tragedy reenacted in this chapter of the silent service involves a heartbreaking miscarriage of intent. The destruction had repercussions, harrowing repercussions, which required a submarine wolf pack to play an entirely different role. Let's single up the lines and get underway with the USS Pampanito. In Singapore, in the fall of 1944, the Japanese decided to move some British and Australian prisoners north to the home islands. Into the holds of the Rakuyu Maru went 1,350 of our unfortunate allies. Into another went some 750 of their fellow prisoners. The conditions on board were so bad they defied description. There was little room to sit and the men were literally packed in. Heat and odors were stifling. On November the 6th, 1944, they got underway and commenced their perilous voyage north. It was a voyage that many a ship before them had failed to complete. submarines were roaming in wolf packs, such as Ben's Busters, headed by Lieutenant Commander Ben Oakley, skipper of the USS Growler. The pack was composed of Growler, Sea Lion, and Pampanito. Our story concerns a Pampanito, so let's meet her skipper, Lieutenant Commander P.E. Summers from Lexington, Tennessee, in the Naval Academy class of 1936. Down our executive officer was Lieutenant Commander L. L. Davis from Charlottesville, Virginia. His shipmates called him Jeff. The torpedo officer was Lieutenant Ted Swain from Mineola, New York. A key member of her crew was pharmacist mate first class M. L. Demas from Manchester, New Hampshire. Here then was the setup for the bitterest irony of any man in uniform. Killing your own guys. Especially these guys, who had already endured the hell of forced labor on a railroad, during which 20,000 prisoners were reported to have died. On September the 12th, 1944, the Busters pounced on some ships in the South China Sea. As far as they knew, it was just another northbound convoy. All tubes ready, depth set, 10 feet. We'll shoot now. Stand by. The sea lions just hit him. They're scattering. Right full rudder, secure the tubes. First the growler and now the sea lion beats us to them. It's gonna be slim pickings for us if we ever get a shot. How many ships left in the convoy? Two, three, four, four plus the escorts. Steady on course zero, zero, zero. All ahead full. Steady, zero, zero, zero. Ahead full. The buster is certainly living up to its name. Well, there's still four of them left. Can't we get an attack in? Yeah, I think so. We're running up ahead of them now. This business of getting ready to shoot and having somebody else snatch the target away is getting kind of stale. The biggest one's still up there. Just waiting for us, Ted. I thought we were pretty fast on our feet, but we're sure in good company. They go after a convoy like this trying to end the war tonight. You gotta hand it to them for teamwork. The growler goes after the escorts. The sea lion moves in after the ships. The radar shows two of the escorts gone. Yeah, they look like a destroyer in a frigate. Yeah, well, there's still three or four up there. That's plenty to make it interesting. It's my guess we'll intercept in about an hour.
Left full rudder. Stand by the stern tube. Left full rudder. Big transport. We got three of them, including the transport. Hey, we got three of them, including that big baby. Open our hatches! Easy now. They'll open them. Sure they will. Supposing they don't! Give them time. The escorts are headed this way. The escorts are headed this way! All ahead, full. Head full. The uh, Japanese got their feet wet tonight. They're leaving us to die like rats. Steady, steady. We've got him. Drop him, yes, me. Look, there's some of our lads were up on deck when we got hit. They open the hatches. They'd better hurry. We're going down. They'll get me, lad. Just hang on a bit longer. Open the forward hatch. Oh, my God. Open our hatch. Why don't you open our hatch? It's Campbell. John Campbell. We're coming, mate. Give me a hand. Hurry up. Busters had decimated the convoy, but for the next 36 hours they combed the ocean looking for the remnants before they reluctantly retraced their steps. On September the 15th, 1944, three days after the attacks, the Pampanito was again passing through the area. Looks like men on a raft. I hate to leave them, but we don't have space on here for survivors. Well, I don't feel bad about it. They sure wouldn't fish our people out of the water. Left full rudder. Left full rudder. Don't leave us, Yanks! Don't leave us! The British are Aussies. Right full rudder, steady on original course. Right full rudder, steady on original course. Send the rescue party on deck and make preparations to take about 10 men in the after torpedo room. Aye, sir. Devers, you better be ready for anything. These people have probably been in the water at least three days now. You think we put them there, Mr. Davis? I don't know, but somebody in the wolf pack did. I'll have a full medical kit on deck. Yeah, let me know if you need anything. Aye, sir. The rescue operation started. who were taken aboard the Pampanito. You could hardly call them men. These were the hardy, and still possessed of enough life when they left Singapore to be useful in the minds of Honshu. 2,100 had been in the holds of ships in the convoy. They had been weakened by many ordeals, and after three days in the water, their condition was desperate. Good for you, Yanks. I knew you'd pick us up. I'm all right. Here, this will remove the oil. I use a soft cloth and be careful or the skin will come right off. Don't use anything rougher than this. This man's in critical condition. Get him below decks as soon as he's cleaned up. Handle him carefully. Deck, 
Captain. Nice going, Jeff. Keep your rescue crew on deck. There's plenty more out there. Right 20 degrees rudder, all ahead standard. Right 20 degrees rudder, all ahead standard. Better get your first group below. We'll move as fast as we can, Captain. Beamer says in addition to exposure and salt water sores, they got pellagra, beriberi, malaria, practically anything else you can get in the tropics. It'll take us five days to get them to the hospital in Saipan. If we can keep them alive that long, the doctors may be able to pull them through. It's going to be a rough job. We can't do too much for them, Jeff. It may have been our torpedoes. I know what you mean. Now here's a little water. Just suck on this gauze. Get these men below right away. There's lots more coming. The Growler left for home night before last. She'd be too far away. Yeah, but we shouldn't have too much trouble raising the sea lion. Let's try it. Buster 2. Buster 2. Buster 3 calling. Over. What's our position? 1838 North, 11102 East. Buster 3, this is Buster 2. Go ahead. Over. Many British and Australian survivors in water. Latitude 1838 North, 11102 East. Need earliest possible assistance. Repeat. Earliest possible assistance. Over. Roger, Buster 3. This is Buster 2 saying Roger and out. Get off a report to the force commander. We'll need all the help we can get. Aye, aye, sir. The Pampanito Stirring Dispatch was received by the submarine force headquarters at Pearl Harbor. And urgent orders were sent to the Queen Fish and the Barb on patrol around Formosa to assist in the rescue. They raced towards the spot. All right, right over there. How is he? He's almost gone. Maybe we can bring him around. Let's have a look at his dog tags. John Campbell of the Gordon Highlanders. Do you need anything? Well, we have some penicillin, but not nearly enough. Oh, we're gonna need it badly. There's not much we can do about that now. I guess not. <laughs> the narcotics in the captain's safe. We're gonna need them all. I'll get them. I need another one. Lend a hand below. Here comes another one. There's no more room down here. Well, make room. There's lots more coming. If we have to, we'll stand up all the way to Saipan. This one's ready to go below. How many does that make, Ted? Uh, 61, sir. As long as we can, we'll take him aboard. We'll never find him out there at night. I know, we haven't much time. Right, 10 degrees rudder. Right, 10 degrees rudder. Before dark, the Pampanito took aboard 73 pitiful survivors. Hundreds were still in the water. With a crew of 89 officers and men, she no longer had room for a single additional man. The sea lion arrived in the air and continued rescue operations. The Pampanito left for Saipan at her best speed in a race against time. The problem now was to keep them alive. I don't know, Captain. Many's the time I wish I were a doctor. I never felt so inadequate before. 
Look at all. Completely dependent on me. And I don't even have the medicine they need. There aren't many full-fledged doctors that could do better. I've always thought you were the best pharmacist mate in the Navy. Thank you, sir. What they need now is luck. Oh, we've got to have that penicillin. If we don't get it in the next few days, we're going to lose a lot of these boys. So in each 12-hour period, we'll stand watch for four hours, nurse for four hours, and sleep four. Each man will be assigned three survivors to nurse. We've pulled out of the combat area, and our objective now is to save these lives. So let's give Demas all the help we can. Aye, sir. The men worked in shifts in a continuous nursing watch. They gave them water a little at a time, but often. Then a little soup in an effort to overcome their critical dehydration. They even donated their own clean clothes. And after 36 hours, the system set up by Demas and Lieutenant Swain commenced to pay dividends. Some were better, but others were worse. It was a grim fight for Demas. Possessing the only medical knowledge on board, he couldn't stop. Fortified with medicines and coffee, he carried on. Thanks, Ed. Campbell still hasn't reacted to the shock. If anything, he's weaker. Better start massaging his arms and his legs. That might help some. Request earliest practical medical assistance. Change practical to possible. Request earliest possible medical assistance. Including penicillin for 73 men. Right. Send it out urgent priority, Ted. Aye, aye, sir. After all you've been through, we hate to feel responsible for making things worse. You needn't be, Lieutenant. All the way from Singapore, we were praying it would happen. All of us were. How'd you get out? They let some of the lads on deck for a few minutes of fresh air. When the torpedoes hit, they overpowered the guard and they released us. Johnny Campbell here was one of them. Did the destroyers pick anybody up? Just snips. Just snips. It's uh. gone. Survivors want to know if you'll come into the after torpedo room. Okay. Take over, Jeff. I've never made a speech before, but since the Almighty has given me a little more strength than the others, I'm going to try. A few days ago, we were drifting on rafts with all hope gone. Many of our friends took their own lives to end the agony. Then, along came this good ship, the Pampanito, with a wonderful crew and a skipper with a heart of gold. And Doc Demers here. He may not have his diploma, but he'll always be the greatest doctor in the world to us. It's been a long time since we've seen a friend. The Lord must be trying to make it up to us. We've never had a friend like Doc Demas. No one has. We want you to know that even if the medical supplies don't get here in time, and more of us follow Johnny Campbell, that we know you've tried your best. Thank you. Thank you for all of us whose lives you've saved, 
and also for our wives and families who we thought we'd never see again. God bless you, gentlemen. God bless you. I have heard a lot of speeches, but never one to compare with that. None of us will ever forget it. It was a heartbreaking thing to learn that we had torpedoed our own people. But the fact that we managed to save you will help. Day after tomorrow, we'll be in Saipan. And I can only promise you one thing, that you'll have more room to move there. <laughs> we won't know what to do with it, Captain. <laughs> a destroyer from Saipan. He sent it over a doctor and medical supplies. You all know what that means. in a moment with our special guest. I imagine that you're anxious to learn what happened to the rest of the prisoners, and I'll try to give it to you in a few words. About the time the Pampanito left the area, the sea lion came in and started picking up more survivors. Next day, the queenfish and barb arrived and continued the operation. The weather then deteriorated very badly and winds up to 60 knots washed the remaining weakened survivors from their rafts. Further rescue was impossible. Altogether, 159 were picked up by the four submarines. I'm very pleased to present to you the captain of the USS Pampanito, Captain P.E. Summers, United States Navy. How are you, Pete? Good Pete, the fact that the prisoners were in the convoy was one of those unfortunate twists of fate. Yes, and one of those that you'd rather have happen to someone else. As I remember, there was another ironical factor connected with the incident. There was. Some of the prisoners were in a ship that was formerly ours. She was the old President Harrison, which had been captured by the Japanese in the Orient at the start of the war. The rescue and nursing of these men was a great job by the whole ship's company. I was very proud of every one of them. It must have been a source of great satisfaction to have a man like Demers in your crew. He's one of the finest men I've ever known. He accomplished what we thought was physically impossible, and it broke his heart that he lost John Campbell. Pete, it's been a great privilege to have had you with us. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Be with us when the silent service reenacts another thrilling submarine story.